When I was asked to talk on what Advent means to me in 2020, unfortunately, my memories immediately took me back to my childhood. In those days, long, long ago, in my case, I really was very excited about the thought of Christmas coming. Winters tended to be long with lots and lots of snow. Evenings were long with only the radio to listen to or books to read. No television, no iPads or mobile phones to amuse you, but we tended as a family to play board games. Ludo, Snakes and Ladders, I Spy with My Little Eye, Dominoes. In this way, we would also speak as we were playing. It may also surprise you that at mealtimes we all sat down together, ate the same things and spoke about how our day had been. What the teacher had been telling us about, and of course, what she'd said was always fact, no matter what my mother said. I mentioned snow earlier, and when we had snow, there was lots of it. Roads were often blocked, and the snow would come up over the tops of your Wellington boots. Apart from the radio, the school had no way of telling you that it would be closed for the day. So, if you could make it at all, you went to school. Sometimes to be told by the janitor, who had a house at the school, that there was no school today. That meant that you went home and got the sledge out to play with your friends. For Advent, the church would always be decorated with bright colours, a Christmas tree and the candles that were lit, one each week until the final one was lit on Christmas Day. I went to a church near our home for the morning service and one some distance away where my granny attended for the evening service. This was some distance away. The whole family attended the evening service and that way we not only worshipped together but it kept the whole family aware of what was happening in each other's lives. As I've grown older I still have the same excitement with Christmas but now I'm more aware of the gift that we all have received in the birth of Jesus Christ who was sent by God. You would think that God Sending his son to earth would have put him in a palace, the son of a great princess. But no, Jesus was born to a young girl who was soon to be married to a carpenter. Even then, at the time of his birth, his parents were required to travel away from their home to register in a census. This meant that when Jesus was about to be born, his parents were forced to try and get into a hotel or an inn somewhere. But because everyone else had been forced to do the same thing, the only place they were available was a stable. This was not a stable as we think of one today with good solid roof and strong walls. It was much more like a cave with animals all inside to keep them safe. It would have been cold and definitely smelly with animal, all the animals inside, but that's where God's son was born. If he'd been born in a palace, none of us would have been able to relate to him because he would have been so far removed from us. But God wanted us to know that his son came into the world for each and every one of us. This should give all of us hope for today and for the future. Paul said in his letter to the Ephesians in chapter 4, In light of all this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here as a prisoner for the Master, I want to get out there and walk, better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline. Not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. You are all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction. So stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who rules over all, works through all and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given his own gift.
Amen. I think God is asking us to use the gift he gave us to work in his name. Thank you.